Hello. Uh, in this tutorial, I'll be going through the process of uh, basically generating a facade that's driven by uh, some data that we'll be collecting in um, Grasshopper using Ladybug, and then creating an adaptive component that we will define the values in uh, using Hummingbird within Grasshopper and then feed that into uh, Revit. So this is the adaptive component. It's kind of a sort of bare bones uh, frame where you have four corner points and then there is this parameter called frame offset. Um, and what that would look like in Revit, I just have a blank project that I started here. Kind of just looks like this. So if I were to create this manually, I would basically just be kind of get, providing the four corner points. Um, and then if you were to click on one of these, you'll see there's a frame offset. So I can make this three feet or whatever. Um, that would change the thickness of the frame. Now the goal in this case will be to create a facade where that frame thickness parameter is driven by uh, data that will be uh, generated using Ladybug. Um, specifically in this tutorial, we'll use the sunlight hours analysis. So let's jump into Grasshopper. Now, in this case, I'm going to be using these plugins for to follow along this tutorial. You don't need these. You don't necessarily need Lunchbox or Hummingbird. There are other tools uh, other than Hummingbird to get data in and out. You can use those. Lunchbox, I'm just really just using to create a quick uh, sort of facade system. You definitely don't need that for if you're kind of doing your own thing in this case. This is just if you're trying to follow along step by step with this tutorial, this is what you'll need. All right, so this is kind of, again, this is not, I'm not gonna be going into depth into adaptive components or any one of these plugins. This is really just an overview of the process of getting the data from one software to the other. So this is kind of boilerplate. I've put this in just to save some time. Um, this is kind of just the weather data that I'm grabbing from uh, the Ladybug website, the ladybug.tools uh, slash EPW map. Um, and if you just kind of right click on any of these, it'll allow you to copy and paste the uh, URL to get the weather data. So once you have this, we can create a sun path. Um, and I'm going to create an analysis period. And for the purpose of this demo, I'll just do uh, hours from September December. Again, you can kind of, uh, you can do whatever analysis period you want. Um, I'm just kind of narrowing it to, for the sake of speed. Uh, and I'll grab my location from here. And this will generate a sun path uh, for those hours. So what we're going to be doing in this tutorial, uh, this is just kind of like one of the more simpler analysis tools, which is why I'm using it. I'm try trying to simplify the tutorial as much as I can because there's a lot of sort of moving parts. Um, but you can, you know, the, the concepts of getting this data from one piece of software to the other would apply regardless of kind of the analysis that you're running. So <clears throat> in this case, We'll be grabbing the uh, sun vectors from the sun path. Now I've kind of already pre-baked my geometry into these. Uh, just these are just generic BREP components. Um, and I'm actually just going to hide my sun path for now. It's a little bit distracting. Uh, and then I'll also hide this, uh, the rhino geometry. All right, so these are my inputs. So my geometry is going to just be this facade of the building. And then I'll have my context be these uh, surrounding buildings in the ground plane. And then the other things we'll need to feed it are grid size. For this demo, uh, I'll just be using like a five foot grid. Um, and it's also important to note that my Rhino uh, file, the units is set up as feet, um, which is important when you're, whenever you're kind of planning on bringing any data back and forth between Revit, uh, you'll want to make sure you're in feet since that's what Revit defaults to. 
Um, and then my distance from base. If, if you hover over this, again, I'm going really quick, but um, there's really good documentation on these tools. If you kind of hover over each of these, it'll tell you what it's kind of expecting. Um, so this is just kind of saying how far to offset from that base surface. All right, so the last thing I'll need is a Boolean toggle to run this. Um, and it should be good. So what we should expect is that the lower corner here is going to be in shadow, and this upper corner here will get more sunlight since the shadow from this building will be uh, cast onto that surface. So this will take a few seconds to run. And as I uh, said, it was kind of, kind of, you can see here that our lower corner is in shadow, and this upper corner has the most sunlight hours. And what this analysis is doing is all it's really saying, it's pretty simple. It's basically saying how many hours in that analysis period that we fed it are is that sort of patch, that grid of surface within uh, sort of a, the direct vector of the sun. And we can kind of look at um, what we can do here is we'll just drop in a point component to see um, what that grid looks like. Um, so those are all the points where the vectors are going to. And then we can look at our results as well. So this is basically saying the number of hours um, throughout that period of time in which uh, that part of the surface is in direct uh, uh, sunlight. Okay, so the next, that's sort of the, as far as we're going to go with the ladybug analysis. It's very sort of dumbed down, simple, straightforward uh, analysis. I'm not saying that this is a good process for what we're doing. This is just kind of, I'm trying to kind of make this quick. Um, all right, so the next step is going to be to generate some sort of uh, panel system. So I'm just going to use Lunchbox random quad panels just because it's a really quick way to uh, get some sort of panelization that is not just a straightforward grid. Um, so I'm going to just feed it some values for the U and V. Uh, that seems about right. Let's see. All right, so you can kind of see these are, we have these sort of uh, tall, skinny panels. I'll roll with that for now. You can always do whatever panel you want. Now, the sort of like trick, not trick, but the process that we're going to be going through here is mapping uh, the solar value to a panel. So right now, um, and this is kind of gets into list uh, understanding of lists, which I'm not going to go in depth to here, but right now we have uh, 1,302 values and we only have 134 panels. So we need a way to kind of figure out which uh, which sunlight hour result we would want to assign to the panel. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to find the closest point um, between uh, so I'm going to get the centroid. So using the area tool, um, we can get the centroid of each of these panels. And then what I'm going to do is say, uh, so I have 134 centroids, for, one for each panel. Um, and I'm going to take those points and these points and basically find the closest point. And what I'm actually going to do is use the index to sort of filter out uh, that large list of the sunlight hour results. So if I just do the list item tool. Um, so my list is going to be the sunlight hour data, and my index is going to be this filtered list of indexes. So this is giving me the index of all the closest points. So now what I should see is a list of 134 values that I can now map to my panels. All right, so now that I have these values, what I want to do is drive the width of that adaptive component. Uh, 
the frame of that adaptive component um, to these using these values. So I'm just going to kind of do this in a real dumb way and remap the numbers. Um, there's obviously much better ways in terms of kind of thinking about it, uh, doing a, a real sort of reaction to the, to the data that you would more likely do if you're kind of working on a real project. This is just kind of to show the, the process. Um, so my values for this, so remap takes three inputs, the values, um, and then two domains. So my source domain is going to be the min and max of this list. And then my target domain, um, basically, this is asking for um, how, what, what do I want the sort of min and max thicknesses of that panel frame to be. So I'll say my minimum will be half a foot, and then my maximum will put it as three feet. So it's a fairly large panel. Um, and we can construct domain. And now this gives me a domain from 0 0.5 to 3. And I can then look at my to see if this worked as expected. Um, we have our remap numbers. All right, cool. So now that we have that, um, we can kind of move on to the last step, which is the adaptive component uh, tool in Hummingbird. Um, like I said, there's, I mean, there's a number of other uh, plugins out there that you can use that will do this, uh, the same thing or a similar thing. Um, I'm using Hummingbird just because I think it's one of the more intuitive and user-friendly ones. Um, and I've kind of preset some of this stuff here so that uh, I don't just to save some time in this tutorial. So it asks for your file path, your file name, um, and then your family name and family type. So this is basically in Revit, um, my family, I didn't have, I, my, I only had one type, which is going to be the same as my family name, so it's just called frame family. And then the parameter is called, um, if I were to go here, you can see, or sorry, my, my parameter is, uh, it's an instance parameter called frame offset. Okay, so, and my frame offset is going to be my parameter name, and then I need to feed it the two other things I need to feed it are or three other things. Uh, when I want to run, uh, write that CSV file that it's going to create for me. Um, and then I need to create the points. So that the points is, are those four points that we uh, needed for, to place that adaptive component. And then the values are going to be my thickness, my frame offset uh, uh, values. So my values we have here. And then the points, I still need to get the corners basically of these panels. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to deconstruct uh, the B rep, and that what that will give me essentially is this uh, list of lists. Um, so I'm going to have four points for each panel. Um, now what's critical here is that you understand what your data tree looks like. Um, and so this has 134 branches. Now what I would need to make sure is that my values have the same kind of data structure as my points. So what I'm going to need to, right now, I just have a flat list of values. So I'm just going to have to graft this in order to make sure that I have data with 134 branches as my values as well. All right. So now I have that done. I'm plugging my values there. I plug in my list of points into points. And I should be good to go now. Um, so what I'm going to this is just going to write a CSV file to this file path. So I'll hit true. And so now that's my CSV file there. So now, assuming that you have uh, installed Hummingbird in your add-ins tab in Revit, you should see this uh, uh, model builder uh, tool here. So or hit that. Create elements from file. This is my file here, my file name. So I'll say 
cool, it all looks good. Um, and now I can process that. So now what that's going to do is it's going to run through and build each of those components uh, one by one. So this might take a minute or two, depending on how many panels you have. Um, and if we want to take a look at just like what this looks like real sort of um, as that's running, it's basically just a list of, uh, it's basically creating that adaptive component and then modifying the parameter, the frame offset parameter. So that's why you see here there's, it's, even though we know we have 134 panels, there's basically double that because each one um, has two sort of operations that happen when it gets placed. And then I guess there's one other, there's this set uh, family. So this is where that one extra one is coming from. Um, but yeah, that's what the data looks like. So is they're basically feeding it our X, Y, and Z values. Um, and it's still going. But you can kind of see it running in the background here, actually. Um, just kind of fun watching that go. Uh, so like we kind of had anticipated in the lower left, you'll see we have the frames that are thinner, that have the thinner thickness, and on the upper right, we were, where uh, in the analysis we were receiving more uh, sunlight, we have uh, a thicker frame, which in this case would provide more shadows since there's more sunlight there. So there's a slight amount of logic to this, but uh, um, you would you know, if you're doing this on a real project, you probably want to have a little bit more uh, rigor in, in how you're using the tool. So it looks like we have maybe one more row to go. Oh, two more. Okay. All right. So then I can just delete these for now. Um, so yeah, so now I have all my 134 panels that were placed. Uh, I can double check that down here. And you'll see here that each of these kind of has its own um, its, its own frame offset that's assigned to it. And that pretty much does it. Thank you.